I once had the opportunity to go on a Google coding interview, and it definitely was one of the most, if not the most difficult coding interview I have ever been on. And in this video, I'm going to break down the entire Google coding interview process from start to finish. So you know what to expect every step of the way. Also, if you stick to the end, I'll actually share the questions they asked me during the interview. So without further ado, let's dive right in. You'll usually start with a technical recruiter contacting you. Whether this is from submitting your resume online or a DM on LinkedIn, the end result is the same. They will talk on the phone with you about your experience and the roles they have, then try to set up a phone screen with a hiring manager. In my case, a recruiter actually reached out to me. You can just as easily find technical recruiters from Google on LinkedIn and cold DM them to see if they're willing to chat. Pretty straightforward so far. The next step is the phone screen. The phone screen is really just to make sure you're even worth interviewing in the first place. If you fail the phone screen, then you won't make it to the on-site, period. In my experience, you shouldn't take the phone screen lightly, as it still is technical, and you may even be asked a simple coding question or a design question. The bar usually isn't too high for phone screens, however. The phone screen is the first interview of many. If you do make it to the on-site, you can expect to do around five to six interviews. So altogether, you'll usually do around seven interviews total. The types of questions asked are pretty standard, usually just focusing on algorithm questions, typically lead code medium and hard questions. System design questions are asked too, sometimes, and at least one of your interviews will be dedicated to just behavioral questions. In my case, they also had CS fundamental interviews where they asked me domain specific questions. In my case, it was centered around iOS and Swift, but this will differ on your background. I also wouldn't worry about brain teaser or gotcha type questions. Those used to be commonplace several years ago, but not so much anymore. A little fact I should mention is that most, if not all coding interviews will use Google Docs to code in. So if you want, make sure to practice coding in Google Docs to get yourself familiarized. In any case, after doing your on-site interview, you have to just play the waiting game. Generally speaking, the Google interview process can take several months, usually averaging around two, two and a half months from initial contact to offer. What's unique about Google's hiring process is that they don't hire you specifically for a single team or position. For instance, if you apply as a front-end developer and you end up receiving an offer, You'll go through interviews with various teams inside Google that are in need of front-end developers. If there's a mutual agreement that you'd be a good fit, then you can join that team. This differs from most companies where you typically interview for a specific team or role. The reason for this is the on-site interview is to make sure you fit the bar for Google, after which you can shop around, so to speak, for the right team, which is why the whole process is so time-consuming. Overall, Google is actually pretty transparent with their interview process. They even reveal how candidates are rated and what they're looking for. There are four things interviewers are trained to look for, and that is cognitive ability, googliness, leadership skills, and technical skills. Let's do a brief rundown of each. First, we have cognitive ability, which just refers to your problem-solving skills. Google also values abstract thinking, curiosity, and a strong willingness to learn. They want individuals who can think critically about complex challenges within their teams and projects. Next up, like all organizations, Google has a unique culture and they want candidates who align with their values. Google's environment encourages creativity, innovation, and open communication within small teams. I've linked an article in the description if you wanna read up more on Googliness as it's called, as there is more to it than what I can cover in this video without making it super long. So you can check that out if you want. Now let's move on to the next skill, which is leadership. Google wants to hire people with emergent leadership skills. They want someone who can not only lead, but also inspire others to do better and foster communication. Overall, pretty straightforward. And finally, we have technical skills, which are exactly what you think they are. Google hires candidates who display strong coding abilities and the ability to display conceptual understanding, not just rote memorization. And I wanna take a minute here and talk about rote memorization. You see, many engineers rely on rote memorization for interview prep, spending weeks grinding countless lead code problems. But what if I told you there was a better way? And there is, and that way is with Tech Interviews IO. 
Our comprehensive curriculum covers algorithms, data structures, and often overlooks skills like behavioral interviews and salary negotiation. We also focus on coding patterns, which are proven techniques you can use across a wide range of problems to consistently and reliably answer complex questions. Just focus on our curated set of questions and proven techniques, and you'll be well on your way to your Google offer. Use promo code TECH30 for $30 off today. Link in the description below. All right, back to the video. Google interviewers will grade your interview performance on a scale of one to four based on the four hiring criteria I just mentioned, where three is the threshold for hire versus no hire. After the onsite, they will convene and come to a decision. It's important to know that a single bad interview isn't gonna fail you automatically. A lot of things are taken into consideration before coming to a decision. In any case, that's pretty much the Google interview process in a nutshell. So now that you know how the process works, let's talk about my experience. Around mid-2020, a recruiter contacted me, which kickstarted the whole process. After the initial call, he scheduled a phone screen. Now, I don't really remember my phone screen all too well. I think we just covered basic iOS fundamentals like what is the difference between a class and a struct, explain the MVC structure, things like that. Of course, they also went over my background. After the phone screen, the fun part begins. I got scheduled for my onsite and ended up doing five interviews that day. In fact, here is my exact schedule. I'll try to remember the exact questions for each interview. So I started off with a behavioral interview. However, it was just pretty standard stuff. You know, the usual suspects like, tell me about yourself, how do you prioritize work? The second interview was CS Fundamentals. But in my case, since I was applying for a mobile developer position, it was just Swift and iOS questions. I remember the interviewer giving me an algorithm written in Swift and asked me to tell them what was wrong with it and ways I can improve it. So they were basically just testing my iOS skills. The third interview was a coding question. And I remember I did pretty well on this interview. The question was a variation of the K closest points to origin problem, which is actually a very common question because I've been asked this question before in other coding interviews, such as Amazon. The fourth interview is where it gets interesting. Now, this is where the biggest problem of the entire onsite arose. So a little backstory. The recruiter told me there were no system design questions for the level I was interviewing at, which was L3, which is for entry level engineers. So I didn't study system design, at all. I completely ignored that topic during my entire interview prep because I was just told not to worry about it. Well, come around to the fourth interview of the day and guess what? It's a system design question. This really irked me because it seems like Google dropped the ball in communication here. Like you'd think the recruiter and the interviewers would be on the same page, but I guess not. But to be fair, it was probably just a one-off incident. It's just really unfortunate it happened to me because I think it heavily impacted my results. In any case, I was asked something like, how would I build Google search or design a search function type question? And I remember the interviewers being really nice and helpful. So overall, it could have been worse. And finally, the last coding question of the day was a variation of the lantern problem, which you can find on LeetCode. I remember it having a unique twist, but it's been a while, so I don't remember, unfortunately. All I remember is bombing that last interview. Overall though, I felt my performance was pretty good the first half, but then dropped in the second half. Regardless, they did not extend me an offer and I moved on. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. It is what it is. Some general advice is to focus on lead code medium to hard questions and really make sure you understand your domain well. And by domain, I mean like front end, back end, mobile, etc. Also, make sure to study system design as a precaution. In any case, I still hope that you got value from this video and remember to like and subscribe if you like this type of content. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.